to just to print that single part. But yeah, it was a long print, and you kind of just got to set it and go and hope that everything goes well. Because I did have some mistakes at the beginning, and you know, yeah, it's it's a really cool part once it's finished. It looks it looked professional, like something you buy, not something you can just make at home. So. I also want to explain some of the workflow of 3D printing and what you have to do to actually 3D print something that you've just come up with. So, first thing you want to do is create a 3D model. And you can either create the model yourself, you can download the model, there's quite a few websites to do that on. You can scan or 3D scan an object and create a replica of it. Or you can customize, which I'll explain too, customize a model. So once you've got your 3D model, you want to put it into a program that basically slices it up and writes the program or the G-code that controls the printer itself. So if you use a slicing program, most of these programs are open source, you can download them off the internet for free. But it takes your model, slices it up into all those different layers that I showed earlier, and writes the G-code that controls the machine, that controls the 3D printer, and tells it basically how to move around in the X and Y and Z directions and how to extrude the plastic so that your part finishes. Um, once, you're, once you're done with that, once the G-code is written, you need to actually send that G-code to the printer. And there's a few different ways to do that. One of the easiest is to just plug your printer in through USB and it'll just send your G-code to the printer through USB. Another way is if you have an SD card reader on your printer, and you can also get an LCD like control panel that will allow the printer to be a sort of standalone unit and you can just walk up to it, plug in your SD card with the G-code file and use the LCD screen to choose the file you want, hit print and it's, it can be finished. So once you do all that, you hit print and then you wait. It does take a while to print things. Like I said, that, that big part took 24 hours to make. Some of these smaller parts like, like this big foot head this took over an hour and a half to finish, so it can take some time. Basically, in the past when I've done things, I'll get the print started in the morning and walk away and come back at lunch and it's finished. So it's not something you have to always pay attention to, but it's, it is mesmerizing to watch. <laughs> so in order to create a 3D model, there's all kinds of different software that you can potentially use to create a model. Um, and these are, some of the, these are some of the free ones, some of the ones you have to pay for, but the first one up here is SketchUp. That's been around for a while. I'm sure a lot of people have probably heard of that one, but it was created by Google. It's free, easy to download, and easy, it's a good place to start. It's easy to create models quickly using that software. Um, another one, Tinkercad. It's a web-based web tool, so you don't have to download anything. You can just go to their website and use the tool to create the model. Blender. Blender is also an open source, but it's, it was originally developed for computer graphics. So it, they've actually used people have used Blender to create full animated 3D movie or computer animated movies. You can also use it just to create individual models. Uh, SolidWorks down here is a, a very professional program, but it's also very expensive, which makes it very uh, expensive. Um, that's one option for you know, a real professional company that might be wanting to do 3D printing. Um, 123D is from Autodesk, and that's a free software that you can use. It's got a lot of the same features and capabilities of SolidWorks, but it's a free design program, more intended for like mechanical design of parts. Um, FreeCAD is also another open source and free CAD program that can do uh, more mechanical type designs. And then there's OpenSCAD. I know there might be a lot of people here that would like to know about this, but basically what you do is you write code. And like to create that sphere, you might have a line of code that says sphere with parentheses after it, and then you give it some parameters like how big the sphere is going to be. You can make all those variables and write essentially a whole code like this, and then hit compile, and it creates your 3D model. So, um, you know, if you're not if you're not so good with you know visually seeing things on the screen to create a 3D model, you can just write code to create a 3D model. So some of the other options for 3D printing to create the models, you can do 3D scanning. One, two, 3D catch. Um, 
sort of like one, two, three D design. Basically, what you can do is take a bunch of digital photos with your normal camera or even your cell phone, and the software will collect all those photos, upload it to a cloud server that stitches them all together and creates a 3D model from your pictures. So you could, I mean, you could take this and take a bunch of pictures of it with your camera, upload it, and create a 3D model of this just as it is um, with that software. And that software is free. Uh, you can use a Microsoft Connect sensor, so some people will probably use that on Xbox 360, but you can use that sensor itself to create 3D models. There's different pieces of software you can use um, to do that with that are also free. Um, there's laser scanning. There's quite a few different laser scanning projects out there on the internet, um, open source projects where you can build a, a 3D laser scanner that just uses like a line laser and a maybe a webcam or a digital camera to create a 3D model with. And people are coming out with new devices to create 3D models from pictures every day. So this is, in the 3D printing world, there's going to be a whole lot more development in 3D scanning than there might be in 3D printing over the next year, I'd say. Um, you can download models to get them. MakerBot, Thing the Thingiverse website is definitely the most popular I think they have like over 30,000 models at this point. But it's a great place to go to find models that people have actually printed. Uh, other websites, GrabCAD is one where you can get a lot of 3D models. DefCAD is a website that was set up by um, the guy Cody who wanted to 3D print a gun. So you can go to that website and find his files for that they, they used to create a 3D printed gun. Um, SketchUp. Um, 3D Warehouse is basically the depository for anybody that's created 3D models in SketchUp. And then there's MakerBot Customizer. Um, it's a, basically an app that runs on the Thingiverse website. And what you can do is basically create models based on someone's OpenSCAD um, sketch. So from back here where somebody basically created a code that has variables, and what you can do is then go into their customizer app and quickly change those variables and create a new model. Um, it's a really good piece of software. I'm actually going to try to show it, show you guys here real quick. So, one of the projects I've done here is I found this on Thingiverse a, while, uh, a few days ago, and it's a little hook that connects to, oh, let me scroll this down here. It's a little hook that connects to um, like this standard shelving that you can buy from a lot of stores. It has these little key-shaped holes in it. But what you can do is what, from here, you basically made it in the customizer, so you can open up the customizer here. So here's the model itself and what you can easily just change these parameters to say 20 and then it recreates the model with your new parameters so you can size it exactly to fit your application. So I actually did that here. I wanted to use this because I have a set of those rails. So I you know, created it, set the parameters after taking my measurements of this part, and then you can easily just well, put it upside down. But you can just snap it in there, and then you have a nice hook to go on your shelving unit. And it was really, really easy to do. You just set the parameters, download the model, print it out, and you're done. So it's a real useful tool at that point when you can use this customizer feature of Thingiverse to create, create objects because you can make them just the way you want them. So, once you've got your 3D model, you have to slice it. There are basically three different programs that a lot of people use right now to slice their models. Um, they're all open source. First one, Slicer, it's probably the most well known and well used. There's Kistler, which is also open source, and Cura, which has been around for a little bit longer, but not so many people use it. Um, MakerBot, their printers all use MakerWare software, which has their own slicer built in. And MakerGear, who makes this printer, recently um, 
started selling a new piece of software that they use exclusively. They can you can use exclusively for this machine to do your slicing and model generation. It's got a lot of a lot of new features that a lot of the like Slicer and Kistler and Cura don't have. Um, but if you want to learn more about these, there's RepRap Magazine. Um, a lot of the people that started RepRap recently came up with this magazine, and they have a whole review in it of the diff these three different slicer programs. So they review like how they write the G code and compare everything, and basically you can learn from that what what one might work best for you. Um, then once you got to print, you have to use the software to actually send the G code to the printer or just to control the printer manually. So there's three different pieces of software that you could choose from, all, all open source and free to download as well. Um, but basically these control your printer while it's connected to the computer and send the G code files um, as, as the part is being made. Um, so this first one here, Pontiface, that's, this is what I use to control my printer. You can control your machine manually with some of these buttons here. You can set the temperatures and see what they are. Um, of the like, extruder in the bed, you can manually extrude the plastic out. Um, there's a lot of basic features here. Um, some of these other programs, Replicator Host, Replicator G, they sort of give you a, a 3D model of your part that you're making as you're making it. Um, and they've got the same sort of control buttons to control your printer manually as you're, as you're running. Um, so I guess I wanted to open up the questions, but before but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do. Well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take some questions now. And I'll just get this started. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get a. Just turn my printer on here so we can start. I can do a sample print for you. Um, but while it's all heating up and getting ready, are there any questions? All right. Okay. Um, well, maybe after everyone else that like after everyone everyone's done mm -hmm. with questions and everything, maybe you could look at a couple of things to say like how like how easy this would be to 3D print or make a model of it or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, in general, there's a lot of things you can print um, on this type of printer that don't require support. So when I saw when you had that picture of that cat and there was a whole lot of support underneath the model of it, they had to take off. So when you use support, you can really print any geometry you want. Um, but again, using support on a printer like this, basically you're using extra material that you have to throw away at the end. So I've tried to in the past just avoid how much support material I really use or design my parts so I don't have to make support material. But using that support material, you can make any geometry you can print up. Right. Can you talk about the resolution a little bit? Some of the 3D printed objects generally you know, all kind of look like staircase and things mm -hmm. like that, but different printers, I don't know, do they have higher resolutions or lower resolutions? So a lot of the 3D printers, they'll, you know, they'll claim a certain resolution that it's attainable, that it's attainable essentially. Um, really, when it comes down to how your machine is set up, there's infinitely infinitely small resolution if you want it to be. That wouldn't be practical, but a lot of the, a lot of the companies that they might say 100 micron or a tenth of a millimeter resolution. So that's going to be how far, how many layers you're going to build up and how accurate your z-axis can move up and down. Um, and so like this printer, a lot of times what I'll do, I'll do 200 microns, 0.2 millimeters. Um, but I could just change the software, change the change the slicing software, and do a completely different resolution, and tune my settings to meet that resolution, and then you're good. Um, you know, if a, when a company claims a certain resolution, that might be like the standard one they use or recommend, but <coughs> more resolution is probably attainable, um, or less if you wanted to build a part faster, essentially. So. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, how do you take support material and the actual material 
So what I've done on this machine, this machine only has one extruder. Some machines come with two extruders. But on my machine with support material, basically support is the same material as the model itself. So you'll print, you'll print your part that has certain features, and it'll also print out layers of support material as it's printing the part of the same material. So it prints that support material a little differently. It basically prints it a little bit faster and makes the walls a little bit thinner so that when it connects to the actual part, you can break it off easier when the part's finished. So that's what you can do with a single extruder machine. On a machine that has two extruders, you can use a separate material. So you might be able to use one of those soluble materials um, and print from the second extruder to create the part. One, one extruder might have the support material and the other extruder with the actual build material. That's, how, that's actually how a lot of all of the professional machines do it. They have two extruders, one for support material and one for the build material. Yes. Do you have to model the support material in, like, to the model, or does it just so generate you, that somehow? So with the slicing programs, they, you can basically, it's an option to use support or not. And the, sli and the slicing programs will create the slicing, or the sli they'll create the slicing pro profile for you based on your part. So you, all you need is the, the, the model you want, the shape of the model you want, and it'll generate the support material all on its own. Yeah. Can you talk about the uh, diameter of the filament? I know that there's, uh, there's a couple different options. Yeah, um, I think uh, sort of originally, like maybe back in 2006, um, maybe up until maybe 2009, um, three millimeter diameter filament was more common. Um, that's still prevalent and available from a lot of places, so it's just going to be a little bit thicker than this. This is 1.75 millimeter filament, which is pretty common nowadays. A lot of a lot of new machines are using their design to use this size filament, um, making the filament a little smaller. They decided to do that because it takes a little bit less force for the extruder to actually force it down through the hot end that's being melted with a smaller filament. So, you know, going with this size, it's pretty prevalent, you can find it, and you're not sacrificing anything by going with a smaller filament size. Yeah? Can that, can, can that take both filament sizes, or are they both? So, this here? printer was designed to use for 1.75 millimeter filament. You can just, I know there's, like somebody already downloaded this model of the filament drive, which is this part that actually has the gear, it's connected to the extruder motor, and has the gear on it, but they've just re 